So Charleston White and 600 Breezy get into it in good old Mississippi. <laughs> Down here in the South, right? Where it was, 600 Breezy, check Charleston White, right? Came at him heavy for disrespecting King Von for the things he said, right? But now as it turns out, it's looking a little different, you know? Once you hear the full audio, full exchange, well, most of the audio, the full exchange of words, right? Might be able to actually break down what happened from the outside looking in. <laughs> so it's a couple sides to the story, right? First thing, Charleston White, as most people probably aren't surprised, he stood his ground, stood on what he said, stood by his word, said he meant every word, didn't back down, didn't run. Allegedly, it was no cops there, like the stories have said. I think 600 Breezy might have said that, but it wasn't cops there, security, etc. No one got arrested. But Charleston White, in the audio you hear, he stood his ground, man, held his own, no backing down. He said he said what he said and he stands by it. You gotta respect that. You gotta respect a man who stand heavy, not only stand heavy, but can stand alone. You dig me? And stand by his word. Stand by what he believes in as a man. As an active contributor to the black community, right? Or I should say the youth, right? Isn't that facts about him that's documented about him, right? His actions, what he does for the youth in the community. You can go research that, find that. So he stood on his word, his feelings. Said he meant every word he said and he's not taking it back. And you know, some people don't like him. Some people don't like how he comes across the things he say. But let's all be real. At the end of the day, what he stands for, at least what it seems like he stands for, the energy he puts out, he stands for the community. He stands for changing the black community, right? Changing the black youth. Helping black youth go in a different direction. He's trying to give back, right? Help the communities, right? He's an actual warrior in the field, right? If we're being real. If we're looking at the facts and the documents and the people from his city, what they say he do, how they say he contributes, how many people he has helped over the years, right? In numerous situations, right? Heavy. Yeah, he may say things that come across the wrong way. He may say it in a vulgar and nasty way. He may put on an act, put on a character. It's some things he has said I don't agree with, but at the end of the day, he stands for a cause. He stands for the people, right? And he stands on his word, right? So when it's all said and done, you gotta respect it. And if you don't like what a man is saying or a person is saying, why can't black folks talk more? Have a sit down, have a meeting. This side, that side, come together, debate. Talk about what was said. A respectful, intellectual conversation with each other, with your so-called brother, someone who looked just like you. Instead of hating him and hating yourself, Try to have some love and compassion like you do for every other race, right? Instead of looking at your brother and wanting to kill him or punch him in his mouth, look at him and want to talk to him. Come to a resolution with him. Solve the problem with him. Have a sit down. Talk. If you get hostile, if you get turned up a little bit, let it turn up. But talk it out, niggas. We can talk to everybody else. We can't talk and sit down with each other, though. But Charleston White definitely stood his ground, stood by his word in that conversation, in that conflict, whatever you want to call it. Now let's get to the 600 Breezy side. Now his fans, see fans are funny, right? Majority of fans, you would have loved to see 600 Breezy punch Charleston White in the mouth, right? Up the gun, <laughs> bust something, right? Crash out, get violent, turn up, get hostile, get physical. Because we love to see violent altercations, right? We love to see each other beat each other up, kill each other. You get off on that, right? That's what the fans want, the bloggers, the people on the internet, right? So they can have some more to talk about, so they can get their clout up, their views up, heavy. They love to see chaos. But when the nigga crash out, and he might get killed, or he gotta do some jail time, or he's taken away from his family, where the fans at, where the bloggers at? What are people who love making situations like this go viral at? Nowhere to be damn found. Sitting back laughing, still talking and typing and talking about the situation as if they care. It's all about the bread. So while that person is locked up or dead, 
his family mourning. The same people who love to amp it up. <laughs> who love to see altercations happen. Who love to see drama. They ain't nowhere to be found. They ain't sending condolences to his family. They ain't helping the family. Kids, etc. They sit back collecting views, money, and clout. Because that's what it's about. Look around. Check out the realm. And you tell me if I'm tripping heavy. So what would y'all have like 600 Breezy to do? Attack, punch him? What points would he get? Would he get clout off that? Charleston White, what, 40 plus, almost 50? Would he get points off that? A lot of people wouldn't even feel right touching him probably. Especially the younger so-called gangsters, so-called generation, because of his age. He's like an older uncle, right? He's almost like an elder, right? Even though he doesn't act like that, you know. He doesn't carry himself like that. So would 600 Breezy have really got points if he would have popped them in his mouth? Or did he do what he should have done by avoiding that situation? And I'm sure everybody has a different opinion. Because he's supposed to be gangster, right? From Chicago, right? Slot for Vine is what they love to say, right? Now if he would have spazzed out and crashed out, started a fight, or gunshots was passed or whatever, somebody died and get seriously injured, then he would have been looking goofy in the system. Fighting over what? Putting it on the line for what? Off of words, off how someone said something. Now I understand it. It could be taken very disrespectful, especially with people who was King Von's friends, right? Grew up with him, was in the trenches with him, heavy, right? I understand they could take that disrespectful. The way it was said was disrespectful, but that's how he gets his point across. And if 600 Breezy would have took it to that level and crashed out and just went in without thinking, without using his mind, right? He'd have been looking stuck in the system. Because Charleston White will tell you, right? He'll call the popo. <laughs> he ain't snitching. He just calling the popo, though. He telling you he ain't finna fight you. He'll tell on you. Even if he do fight you, he's still going to tell. So it was a lose-lose situation either way. And allegedly, it was people there that wasn't going to let it go down like that anyway. They down deep in Mississippi shooting a movie. You know it's deep in there. They in the trenches, too, in Jackson, Mississippi. You know it's deep in there. If he would have set it off, people would have got hurt. It would have been all the way up. So he approached him, talked to him, said what he said like a man, man to man, whatever you want to call it. And it was left at that. Now, if they could have sat down and had a more in-depth conversation, really talked to each other, man to man, and look each other in the eye. And they both explain where they're coming from, why they feel the way they do. He get it off his chest. He get it off his chest. And you really come up with a solution to the problem. Really come up with ideas and solutions, right? As two black men talking, having dialogue as men, not having to get physical, disrespectful, nobody having to die. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with going that route, the respectful route, the life route, right? The living route. We look at each other with so much hate. We filled with so much self-hate. Every fucking altercation, we want to see blood. We want to see war. We want to see it get physical. We want to see it get ugly, right? If not, niggas is pussy. Niggas ain't gangster. Because they supposed to go in guns blazing every time. Just kill each other off. Everybody beefing. We want to talk about black social media. All it is is a bunch of black hate. Niggas hating niggas. Arguing, talking. We talk about change. Get the fuck out of here. Imagery, right? And the image that gets pushed. Even in the black community on social media, heavy, is hate, nigga. Hate, you dig me? Animosity, violence, beef. People love to talk about change, dog. Shit is all a game, dog. Heavy. Niggas want to see niggas die. Every time they fall right into the trap. I seen a few things where 600 Breezy said, you know, it was police there. Charleston White was going to call the cops. Charleston White saying, no, it wasn't. That wasn't the case at all. So... You know, this story is going to be ongoing for sure. Everybody got their side of it. <laughs> Everybody has their idea of what happened, like any situation. But the way it was handled, the way they both approached each other, we don't know the full story, the full dialogue, right? But 600 Breezy approached Charleston, and Charleston approached back. Nobody got shot, hurt, murdered, punched, jumped, beat up. Nobody got disrespected, right? They both stood their ground, saying how they feel. Now, if they couldn't come to a solution and it's still a problem, they see each other later, they may fix it in a different way. 
They may see each other again under different circumstances. And it could go a different way, right? Hopefully the way it goes is they talk again. Have a real convo again. Get the shit fully off your chest. Express how you feel, didn't you? Anger is the easiest emotion to go to, dawg. The easiest, like that. How about we as people start trying to control them emotions, control that anger, and solve this shit a different way? Or do you motherfuckers really not care? Y'all would have rather seen both of them go out, right? And gunfire, exchange some blows. That's what the world wants to see, right? The internet, right? It's all one big game, man. But that's my take, my opinion, dawg. On Charleston White and 600 Breezy conflict. Everybody came out alive, you dig me? It is what it is. Oh, me. Oh, me. I ain't got no picture, you hear me? Warrior. Like that. Now let's talk about it from a different side. If it would have went down, right? Heavy. If 600 Breezy would have let off. <laughs> Tapped his chin, huh? Would it have been permissible? Would it have been the right thing to do? If you look at it from a what? A gangster standpoint? What we love to say? A real nigga standpoint? From the streets? How the streets think he should have reacted, right? What if it was somebody else besides 600 Breezy? Who really would have swung on Charleston White? Punched him in his mouth or something? Or did worse? What if it would have been a hothead? Or somebody who was close to King Von, right? Somebody who had deep love for him, right? Who don't give a damn. No holes barred going in. No matter what, loose cannon, heavy. Now if he'd have reached out and touched him, has it been caused to do that? Charleston White has said some disrespectful things, right? Said some derogatory things, right? About the dead, about people's families, etc., etc. Yeah, he's older, but he's in the field, right? Yeah, he's older, but he's talking heavy noise. So it's all go, right? He's fair game still, right? No matter the age. Once you get past 18, age is just a number, right? Allegedly. <laughs> so the use of his words and things he say, does it give someone the right to punch him? To get physical with him if they see him? Did it give 600 breezy leeway to go on his grip? Looking at it from that side of it, at the disrespect, the wordplay that he has used, on a touchy subject, on a sensitive subject, you know what I'm saying? And not just the Chicago situation. Every situation he spoke on. Any person he has spoke on, right? Does it give the families, their loved ones, permission to react in a violent, physical way? If they see this man out, would they be right if they took it there? Definitely two sides to it, but at the end of the day, a man going to say what he want to say. But you definitely must think about the words you say, the things you say about people's families and loved ones, right? About the dead. Because I'm sure someone out there who wants to put hands on him, who wants to harm him, right? For the things he has said. So if it would have went that route, would the blame have been on 600 Breezy? Would he have been congratulated for punching Charleston White or turning the scene up heavy? Would he have got clout? Would he have been more respected in the streets, on the internet? His clout definitely would have went up, huh? <laughs> Humanity lacks respect. Humanity lacks remorse, right? Humanity lacks appreciation, right? If 600 Breezy would have taken the gangster route, <laughs> heavy, how would people look at him? Would it have been worth it just to say he punched Charleston White for talking, running his mouth? He got one on. Different speculation, different opinions. <laughs> Just another side, right? <laughs> Stay aware. Oh, me. Oh, me. I ain't got no picture, you hear me? Warrior. Like that.